This video is brought to you by the energy team at Atlas, a vertically integrated EV technology ecosystem company. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me in New Mexico charging up my Tesla Model S where there's been some news that's been announced today that Tesla will actually open their superchargers in America to CCS drivers. Now, no surprise, I've been hinting for a while. You guys have seen all the, the hints from all the leaks online. We know Tesla was gonna open up in America. There's a whole bunch of other things that have happened today as well. I figured we'd brush on those, but really just talk about what the supercharger network opening up may look like for EV drivers and some of the controversy that stands behind it. I mean, we've seen so many people excited, so many people blatantly pissed off about it. I think it's important that I share all sides of the equation, my personal opinion, and let's just have a quick conversation about what it might look like if and when now Tesla will open up their supercharger network. <laughs> So just today, the White House released a fact sheet on sort of their plans for the EV infrastructure coming up. And I'm gonna do full in-depth podcasts over on the Out of Spec podcast channel with friends in the industry talking about each individual point and what they might be. Specifically, part of this rollout requires a 97% uptime of DC fast chargers that go in the ground. However, uh, I don't know how they're measuring that. So if you use the charging networks reported uptime, is that accurate? I think we've proven many times that it's not. So I think services like Rate Your Charge, like we're doing on Twitter and now a Google form, which I'll link in the description below, really help share the true user experience of chargers working or not. And so far I've actually driven this Model S down from Fort Collins, Colorado, down here almost to Truth and Consequences, New Mexico is the next stop, and it's been a flawless journey, and I wish it could always be like that. 250 kilowatt charging at every stop, plug in on the first go, just amazing. So the news that the supercharger network is opening to other EV drivers as a non-Tesla owner as well, again, we have the e-tron, we have the Rivian, we have other vehicles that don't charge on the supercharger network. This is huge, exciting news because I honestly hate dealing with crappy chargers. I wanna be able to roll up, plug in, and know I'm gonna get the full speed. On the other side of things, as a Tesla driver today, we've arrived to a couple superchargers that were looking a little busy, and I'm like, oh, it definitely would be more full if CCS drivers were here. So ultimately, let's start with the what, and then we'll get into maybe the social aspects of charging and how that might change over time. A huge thanks to the Energy Group from Atlas for sponsoring today's video. Guys, electric vehicles, especially in heavy duty applications, are gonna require some serious energy storage. So Atlas has been working to perfect a energy storage solution in the form of their new battery cell technology that can handle extreme heat, extreme cold, and extreme high heavy usage without much degradation. It's pretty incredible. So not only do you need a cell that can withstand all of the abuse, you also need to charge it very quickly. And that is where their megawatt charging standard comes into play. They're actually developing a whole network of DC fast charging around one megawatt, maybe even above, that will handle CCS, MCS, and their own proprietary connector and handle design that they hope will become the future. It's pretty interesting as well because this, this cell technology works perfectly with the high power charging infrastructure to charge full in about 15 minutes, even if it's dead cold or dead hot. Now, you guys know that has me really intrigued, so keep an eye on some future videos because we're gonna be showing some of their work real time. I can't wait to explore what they're working on. Some hardcore, fast charging of some heavy duty battery packs coming to you very soon. A huge thank you to the energy team at Atlas for sponsoring today's video. So the what is, well, Supercharger networks will be opening. Now it's already open in other markets such as Europe, Australia, and other places where pretty much any car can roll up to select supercharging stations, take out their Tesla app on their phone. Again, you don't need a Tesla car to have a Tesla app. Activate the charger, plug in, and you're good to go. Now that is a seamless experience. I've made videos on this channel as to how that works, how well it works. And there are some limitations, the first being the cable length. 
If you look over here at these chargers, you'll notice the cables, where am I trying to go? Whoa, right here. Uh, they're very short and they're honestly designed for the charge port in the back left of the car, the back driver's side or the front passenger side, depending on which way you go. So not every car will be seamlessly compatible with Tesla superchargers. And certainly you could park weird ways and block stalls and get a plug in. However, that's really not in the spirit of charging. So I think the first kind of issue more or less we might see with this are Taycan, other cars that have a really hard time, even though that's on the front passenger side, it's just pretty far back. Other cars might have to park a little bit funny and we might have some parking issues at superchargers. That can be solved with site design, especially as we start to see more pull through sites Let's hope there's even more similar to, you know, when we were in Norway, almost every site we found had some sort of pull through option. Just amazing to see that. And that would really help, you know, get the charge port close to the cable. Uh, the second thing is how are you actually going to activate the chargers? Will you need to buy an adapter? You know, what, what does that kind of look like? And my understanding is I'm going to take you outside in the wind really quick, just to show you how this might look. Uh, this bit of the supercharger right here where the handle goes in, this is actually going to turn into a CCS adapter if you select it in the app. That's kind of what we're thinking. I think it's going to be called the magic dock. And basically, if you have a Tesla, you just pull out the connector as normal. And, uh, you know, you pull out your Tesla plug, plug that in. If you have a CCS car, it will actually lock the Tesla plug to a CCS adapter, physically locked. That whole unit will come out then plug into the car as a CCS plug. That's what we're thinking. We're not 100% sure that's how it'll work, but that's my guess. And that's just gonna be freaking so cool to play around with. Actually, what I wanna do is plug in the Tesla to the CCS adapter, right? I guess that makes sense. And then go from CCS back to Tesla with the other adapter I have right here. Let me pull it out to charge a CCS station to a Tesla. So I think it'd be cool to have a string of adapters put together. Uh, you know, sounds convoluted and complicated, but we'll see. Some other questions I have about how this will work is for high voltage cars, Lucid Air, Taycan, Ionic 5, EV6, you name it, Hummer EV even. Um, for these very high voltage cars when charging, the supercharger network typically can't output up to a thousand volts. I believe most of the equipment's rated for 680, somewhere around there. So a lot of these higher voltage cars will actually need to use their onboard boosters to charge. Now, Ionic 5 EV6 is limited to 100 kilowatts. They go from the charge port into the rear motor's inverter that steps up the voltage to the battery pack and charges it basically as a regen into the battery. Really genius. The Tycon onboard booster splits the pack voltage. Uh, so, and there's actually most Tycons I think are only optioned with a 50 kilowatt booster. If you option the 150 kilowatt booster on that car, you're in luck because you'll probably get the full close to 150 kilowatts on these. I've played around with that in Europe and that worked well. Uh, and Lucid, you know, that really has to step the voltage up. So again, similar situation there. They're going to use the Wonder Box and that should be great. So that's, I think, gonna be a little bit of a pain point. It's not like everyone is gonna have the best charging experience on the supercharger network from the CCS side. Assume all stations are empty. Drivers may still want to choose EVgo, Electrify America, Blink, ChargePoint to actually get faster charging than the superchargers will give, especially with the higher voltage cars where they need to step up the power. The other side of it is I don't know if CCS will output more than 500 amps. My guess is they actually will. So that means vehicles like the Volvo EX90 or Polestar 3 that claim 250 kilowatt charging on a 400 volt system car, those might actually get the full juicy speeds on the version three chargers. That's going to be really interesting to test. Will they be capped at 500 amps or will they do what Tesla does and go 680, 700 amps full sendy send mode and dump the current in. I'm not sure, but that's gonna be a really interesting thing to play around with. So from a practical standpoint, using higher voltage capable chargers still might be more practical for the existing higher voltage cars. Now, the next generation of Tesla supercharger, the V4, should be able to go up to a thousand volts or maybe even higher. And that's gonna be, uh, you know, maybe seeing bigger speeds, of course. And I can't wait to see what that brings for CCS uh, adapter ability to, to output power. We might see 
500 kilowatts on those. I'm not sure, uh, but time will tell. That's gonna be really great to watch that rollout. So that's all speculation. Most of this, again, is all speculation because all we can do is base off of the experiences in Europe. So let's talk about what happened with the European Tesla supercharger rollout. It originally started with just a handful of stations. I wanna say five, 10, something like that. And I believe it was in Norway first and then expanded to Germany, France, UK, other places. And correct me if I'm wrong on that exact rollout, but it basically started in a small market and expanded from there. That was the first time Tesla opened up the network to CCS and it was actually easy for them to do so because Tesla superchargers in Europe use CCS handles. So all they had to do was flip the switch and allow payment processing through the app and the rest of the communication, everything was just an easy situation. There were still some interoperability issues that I think have been worked out. For example, I took a Polestar 2 to a Tesla supercharging station just early on as they were opening and I couldn't get the car to charge at all. And I'm pretty sure that was some communication issue on the Polestar side, not working well with Tesla's back end. So I think that's gonna be a little bit of a thing in the US to start. We might see certain makes and models having some communication bugs with Tesla. Um, Tesla's always really fast at sorting those things out. So uh, we know they've been attending actually the Charin conferences, testing out their cars on other chargers, testing out other cars on their chargers. And so we know they've already started the interoperability, uh, you know, just sort of a, a breakdown, making sure everything works. But I think that's gonna be a little bit of a pain point. The second thing is what chargers will actually open. My guess is the initial rollout will see three to five chargers. That's just my gut feeling. I don't know any of this to be true, of course, but I think we'll see a couple on the West Coast, a couple on the East Coast, and then we'll start to see it fill in from there. Now, my guess is Tesla is actually gonna open up superchargers that are gonna be the most beneficial to CCS drivers first. And those would be in areas that don't have existing CCS coverage. Actually, for example, where we are right now in Socorro, New Mexico, there are no CCS chargers on this stretch of I-25. You actually cannot drive an EV other than a Tesla where we are right now, unless maybe a Lucid Air with big range. And so seeing this supercharger network opened up, it's a very low traffic charger. People are doing generally pretty deep charges for big stretches. This could be a really useful one to actually unlock new corridors. Wyoming, very close to our home, comes to mind. Uh, would be a really great one to see unlocked. Montana, you name it, it goes on. So I think the station opening will actually, my guess, is going to be in rural areas first. We'll probably see a couple hubs in cities I'm thinking that new Santa Monica hub should be kind of interesting that Tesla just put in. Uh, maybe there's some big ones in the New York metro area I'm feeling as well. These are just my guesses. But I think ultimately this will have the biggest impact on CCS drivers to unlock new corridors. And because the hardware is already there, all they have to do is add an adapter, flip a switch and you're good to go. So that's gonna be huge. The next question is what's it gonna be like at a Tesla supercharger when you have Teslas and CCS cars charging? Now in Europe, it definitely is a bit weird. I'm gonna to be totally honest. Uh, I've, I've now charged with Polestar, with Taycan, with iWays, with other vehicles at Tesla superchargers. And Tesla owners always, there's always a few of those guys that kind of look at you like, really? You couldn't go down the street to your charger? And there's a little bit of this condescending nature in full transparency from Tesla owners saying, this is the network that I paid for because I bought a Tesla I have access to and get your bolt out of here. You know what I mean? Like there is that honest aspect going on. And I think uh, that's certainly gonna be the case here in America. And especially early on, I think as people get used to seeing other EVs at chargers, that will die down pretty quickly. But you're definitely gonna have a lot of people being like, what the heck are you doing here? You can't charge here. And then they'll actually see the car physically connect and charge and maybe people will start to learn and realize. It's actually the same thing when I bring my Tesla Model S to an EA station. You see the guys in ID4s and Bolts being like, go to your supercharger, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm testing out chargers. <laughs> and so, you know, this dynamic will eventually, uh, I think, wear down. At some point in the future, it's just gonna be like any charger can charge any car. And as long as you're pulling power, even at 99%, you have the right to be there to charge. 
And uh, one thing I think Tesla could actually do is maybe double the rates when you're above 80 or 90% state of charge. A Canadian charging company just started to do this. Uh, users of their network seems to seem to think that it worked really well. It gets people off the chargers. If you need to go to 100%, you can, you pay for it. Um, but I think that will really help with throughput. At the end of the day, I think the biggest problem is going to come from when there's a line at a supercharger and there's CCS cars and not Tesla's charging at the charger, blocking Tesla's from charging. That's what's going to annoy the Tesla owner, in my opinion. So that's going to be an interesting one to see. Pricing is probably going to be more expensive for CCS drivers than Tesla drivers. Honestly, I think that's fair. If you're going to buy a Tesla, you get access to the network at a discounted rate seems reasonable to me. I'm not sure 100% if they'll do that. They do in Europe. You can buy a monthly membership similar to Electrify America or EVgo to buy down your per kilowatt hour rate. Seems good. And uh, yeah, I think Tesla will probably do that. So for 15 bucks a month, something like that, buy down the rate to mid 30 cents per kilowatt hour, maybe 40 cents a kilowatt hour, depend on the station cool with me. If I can make sure I have the best charging locations, again, superchargers are, I just keep getting blown away at how great the locations are that they're at compared to others. Uh, it's just worth maybe a, an extra few cents a kilowatt hour to have an easy, good charging experience at better amenities. And that is very location specific. There are examples where CCS is better location than Tesla. So overall, I'm really excited about the network opening up. It'll be super interesting to watch the entire rollout happen. Uh, I'm not sure how fast it'll go. Tesla claims, or at least the White House claims, 3,500 superchargers, also destination chargers, I think a total of over 7,000 chargers. But I think that means individual supercharger posts, not locations. So 3,500 posts, I don't know which stations will get it first. They're going to be doubling their network over a period of time. Again, I'll do podcasts deep diving on all of those situations there. But I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about public charging now being at the supercharger network. Are you a Tesla owner that's embracing it, says this is good for the EV industry as a whole? Or are you one of those Tesla owners that are like, nope, I paid for the exclusivity and I want to use the network? Or are you a CCS driver that says, I don't need it. I have good experiences driving CCS. There's plenty of those out there, don't get me wrong. And I've had great road trips using CCS. Uh, or are you a CCS driver thinking, I gotta, gotta come to Tesla Superchargers now, that's your top priority. I think time will tell for me how I feel about the whole situation, but overall, I'm definitely gonna be using Tesla Superchargers when I road trip my Rivian, when I road trip others, because ultimately Teslas can get the CCS adapter to charge publicly, Public cars can now come here. I'm all for opening it wide open. I think it's great for the entire movement. Although I do worry a little bit. This is where I'll leave you my final point. I worry a little bit about Tesla's uh, allure, if you will. I've been recommending, I just put up a video this week about the 10 new electric cars I recommend. And Model 3 and Model Y were right at the top of the list. And I think for many people, they buy a Tesla because of the charging network. If the charging network is perfect or reliable enough for everyone to use, then the actual need to buy a Tesla over CCS cars or others goes down. So I'm going to be really curious to see sales numbers once this all rolls out. Will Are people buying Teslas for the ease of charging or are they buying them for autopilot, styling, convenience, tech, whatever it is. And I would say there's probably a larger percentage than you think of people buying Teslas for the charging experience. Just this week, we put up another video of Colton's dad buying his Model 3 Performance. He canceled his Rivian R1T order and went to a Model 3 Performance purely because of the charging network situation. He wanted to be able to get around easily. I wonder if that's going to continue once the network opens up. Curious to hear your thoughts on that as well. So thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. Just a little bit of my thoughts on the supercharger network opening. Uh, pretty exciting here. A uh, lot of other questions about totally how they're going to do it from a technology standpoint, adapter standpoint, location standpoint. These are all still things that are question marks. We'll of course be covering the rollout. I can't wait to charge a non-Tesla vehicle at a supercharger in America for the first time. You know that's going to be a video coming on this channel sometime soon, according to Tesla. So thanks again for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.